This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter from Nashville, Tennessee. Goes by the name of Tony B. Mr. Tony B, how you doing today, sir? Yes, I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. I uh, definitely just was just having like a space for a... Uh, for new upcoming artists is important. So spaces yeah, like this. Are- yeah, that's our whole mantra, man, trying to expose the new artists because a lot of great music out there. Um, and a lot of times you really don't know about it unless you know about it. You know what I mean? So, but you have a brand new single out, which is, uh, I like it. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, Thank you. You know what this was. Uh, yeah. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but before we do, um, tell us about Tony B. Uh, my real name is Tony Tony Brown. Uh, my stage name is Tony B. It's stylized. It's kind of one word, but uh, I'm born in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I started making music when I was about 10 or 11, kind of just making, my dad bought me a little keyboard and I uh, started making beats in my room. Um and then eventually, I, a couple of years later, I started getting into singing and, and writing and things like that. Um, then I started making full songs and full productions and stuff like that uh, with, with vocals, um, which w- I, at first I was just making beats, but then I started making full songs with vocals. Uh, spent about six months in my room kind of making this little CD and then sat my parents down and let them listen to it. Um, and they didn't really know that I could do any of that. Um, so it was a special moment there and they took me a lot more seriously when it came to that. Um, so then they got me, you know, the full setup and production equipment and, and, and microphones and all that good stuff. And that was about 13 or 14. So since then it's, it's been kind of full steam ahead as far as just like producing all the time and writing and making songs. And then I got in the choir and and band and all kinds of other stuff when I was in high school. So that kind of like taught me the, just the more music theory side of things, like what actual notes I was playing and like how to structure songs and things like that. Um, And it kind of got me ready for the industry as far as discipline and focus and stuff like that. Um, So then when I graduated high school, um, I started kind of going out meeting other producers, other songwriters, other artists, stuff like that. Started networking in Nashville, um, and then started just building my network and and getting opportunities through that and stuff like that. So it started really young, um, and then as I got older, it kind of just kept going. And and now I make a a living for it. It's 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 kind of it's kind of it's kind of nice now, <laughs> but it's been a long time coming for sure. Okay, um, let me back up a little bit. So you said your dad bought you a keyboard. Uh, when you were younger, how old were you? Um, I think I was about ten when he bought me the keyboard. Yeah. Okay. And that's where it kind of started. Okay. Uh, were your fam- was your your parents were they into music as well or? My parents actually no, like they none of my family is really musically inclined as far as playing music. I mean, obviously they all like music, uh, and I grew up with a lot of soul music and nineties R and B around my mom but nobody was really musically inclined. Like he, I think they ended up getting it just for me to have, like not, you know how you just kind of get your kids stuff, just thinking they may, may like it or not. It wasn't anything that they were like, oh, we need you to play this because we've done it. Or we think you like you be this crazy good pianist or anything. It was just kind of like, oh, like set it in your room and mess around with it if you want to. Um, so that's where it kind of started. 
Okay. And you said you were, you said you had uh, wrote some songs and let your, let your parents hear it. Um, how did you, um, how did you, uh, how did you write songs at such a young age? Did you have any kind of training or how did, uh, how did that come about? <laughs> That, that's the funny thing. I don't I don't even really know. I just kind of started writing what I grew up listening to. So I, I remember one of my first songs was some little cheesy Come On By. It was, it was called Come On By. Um, I think the lyrics were something like having a thing tonight, wondering if it's all right, if you could come on, come on by, come on over, something like that. Um, but it was just like I was just picking up stuff like I had heard like from growing up and stuff because I hadn't obviously been through anything at what 11 years old 10 11 years old right uh, so yeah it was just kind of the writing started from like just whatever was coming to mind at the time from stuff I grew up with okay um and you said your your mom I believe you said your mom was uh, a fan of R&B and soul music what type of artist did she listen to oh my mom yeah she that's where I got my um <laughs> that's kind of where I got my music taste and influence from. She played a lot of Aaliyah, D'Angelo, Maxwell, Eric Badu, um, Destiny's Child, like early Beyonce, uh, Usher. So um, I kind of got a lot of that. I always name Aaliyah as one of my biggest influences because it's just, it, my, Aaliyah is one of my biggest influences because she was really the first thing I remember like associating with uh, my sound because um, she doesn't, she, you know, she used to do all these really intricate vocal arrangements and background vocals and she would use background vocals as like lead vocals. And so I kind of do that now where I'm, I'm big on background vocals. I spend like hours and hours and hours just like recording like so many background vocals. But uh, that was the first kind of thing that I gravitated to as far as influence. So I definitely say Lee is one of those, those bigger influences for sure than my mom. Okay. Um, and we're going to, like I said, talk about your, your new music, but um, take us through Now We were talking offline uh, before we got, before we started recording you, uh, even though you're from uh, Tennessee, you actually spent some time in Los Angeles too, right? Yeah. I moved, uh, I moved to LA about early 2018, so almost three years now. But um, yeah, I was out there and I think I had just reached a point in Nashville career wise that felt like I had hit it like a glass ceiling because I had, I had, you know, met a lot of people and I was, uh, I played one of the biggest venues here in Nashville, Mercy Lounge. And I had just like felt like there was nothing else I could really do. I kind of had checked everything off. So I was like, you know, I either need to go to LA or New York or some kind of, or Atlanta or some kind of bigger music hub where I can kind of expand what I'm doing, uh, and meet, meet more people. So that's when I decided to go to uh, LA. And um, yeah, I was out there for almost three years and uh, just meeting people and networking and building, um, you know, building my network of people. And I think that's the biggest thing people don't realize is that the industry is, is obviously talent, but I mean, it's, it's very much who, you know, too. And, and, and that's why it's important to keep relationships um, good and, and not basically piss people off because, <laughs> you know, they, uh, you never know when somebody could help you out. Like, you know, when, especially this year with a lot of musicians going through, you know, lack of work and, and the industry and especially the touring industry being down right now. Um, you know, a lot of work that I've gotten this year has been because of my friends. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what LA's kind of done for me the past couple of years is just kind of introduced me to a new web of people. Um, they can kind of get me more to where I want to be overall. Okay. Um, and we were talking earlier, you said, uh, hopefully after, um, this pandemic you're coming back out this way or yeah absolutely yeah i I, i'm back in nashville right now i I just got back here a couple months ago um and i was just missing family i had been excuse me i had been away from them um i was back uh here in nashville for christmas last year in december and then obviously everything kind of started getting worse with the pandemic uh in march and so then they started 
cutting off travel and stuff like that. So I really couldn't see my family for about six months. And I just didn't want that to happen again to where I didn't know if I'd be able to come back or if that would happen again. So um, my lease was up and I was just thinking like, okay, cool. Let me just stay in Nashville until everything settles down. And once it does, we can go back out. And so, yeah, the first, first, uh, first sign of everything kind of opening back up and these numbers getting into control is when I'm, I'm definitely going to start making plans to head back out. So. Okay. Sound like you come from a very tight knit family. Yeah, no, we're, we're really close for sure. Um, and I'm usually good, at, like being away from family. If I know that I can, you know, go back frequently every right. few months or so. But when you don't know if, especially with things, how things are recently, you don't know if travel will get shut down. Like the, those six months we got a rough being away and not knowing when I would be able to go back. So, uh, so yeah, we're definitely close for sure. Oh, that's great. Um, do you have uh, siblings as well? Yeah, I have uh, four siblings. Well, okay. Uh, three brothers and one sister. Okay. And, and none of them are in the music business? Um, nah, they're all into different things, sports and, and photography and, you know, science and all the other stuff. I'm the only, like, musical musical one in the family. Okay. That's cool. Um, now, you're from Nashville. And when I think Nashville, I think country music. Um, right. Is there a... Um, Large R and B soul scene in uh, Nashville. I know Memphis has that, but what about Nashville? Yeah, so yeah, and you're right. Country music is the like Nashville is the mecca for country music, and uh, it when I was back here, uh, kind of growing up, it's there's never been any space for like pop music or or R and B or hip hop or, or or rap at all. Pretty much any genre other than uh, country. They do have a small like uh, indie rock scene a little bit, but uh, other than country and rock, there's you know, growing up there were really never any spaces for that. But I did find while I was gone. Apparently, I'm back now. There's there's like a lot more spaces that are here now for for people who are in different genres, and uh, I think I think there's a couple of entertainment companies and labels that are starting to open up around that are of different genres. Um, but yeah, Nashville is still predominantly country music. Um, so you definitely, for me, I felt like I needed to go, um, uh, to another city to kind of expand in the genre that I wanted to. So. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's talk about your new music. Um, now let me ask you, is this, um, is this your debut single or? Uh, no. So you know what this was is, um, I've been releasing because I, I started with YouTube in 2000, uh, 12. And so I started kind of doing YouTube covers for a few years and I didn't really have original music. I was just kind of making YouTube covers. Um, and then in 2015, I put out my first single um, and I've get, kind of been releasing various singles and, and two different EPs since then. Um, and then I put out a single this year called Worst Way um, that kind of got some traction and, and kind of got some still getting traction and some attention and uh, open some doors for me. And so what I decided to do was take Worst Way and pretty much add my past two EPs and all of my music that I had released uh, since 2015 uh, to a whole mixtape. And I put that all together and made uh, the first two EPs were with the lights off and with the lights on. And so this mixtape is called Flashing Lights. It's got about 14 tracks and it's pretty much all the songs that I've released the past two or three years. And um, it's got that new song called Worst Way. So that's kind of like my first project that I consider my first project. And then you know what this was, is the single after all of that. So uh, we'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive five dollars. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRC. WQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Well, I guess you can consider it like my first single for whatever's next. Okay. And so, um, 
it's more of a compilation of all your stuff since uh, 2015. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, just because Worst Way was Worst Way was getting a lot of traction, so I'm like, let me just put everything together so people can find all this other music too, and and I can even um, re-release everything. And and it's been a good it's been a good move because we've gotten uh, a lot more attention on all the other uh, like the back catalog and now i get to kind of start fresh with a new single with a new audience too so yeah okay are you a um independent artist or are you signed to a label how does that work so right now i'm independent i've been doing everything myself since i started um just now getting to a point where um you know people are showing interest and things are kind of going back and forth and, and all of that. But I'm very much, I've always been really adamant on uh, ownership and not getting in a situation um, that stifles my creativity or makes me not want to make music anymore or, you know, a situation that's just not going to benefit me long term. Uh, for me, I've always been pretty hands on on the whole creative process. and. Um, if I do ever sign with the label, I, I want it to be a good situation and I want it to be a partnership rather than, you know, something that uh, is one sided. And, and I don't like I said, I don't feel connected to the whole process. So for me, um, for that, I would I would want to like have like a partnership if it was a label situation. Um, but the thing with that is labels these days don't necessarily. Uh, want to take the time to develop artists so you kind of have to come already developed with the look sound fan base audience everything so that's kind of where i'm at right now is just building my own audience and my own fan base and my own visions and everything so that's what the past maybe like three three years have been and, and now we're kind of at this point where it's like okay cool i've built this this thing the past few years you know who's who's interested at this point so right so what i kind of hear you saying is you want to go in when you have some some leverage um exactly. something exactly. to negotiate with i understand yeah. Yeah. um okay so what's then what's been the reception like for the the latest uh, compilation or ep um how's it been received yeah. It's been it's been great. Um, like I said, Worst Way was uh, has been one of my biggest songs to date. Um, Worst Way is a um, duet, kind of like a with a throwback R and B sound. But Worst Way um, was what we were pushing before you knew what this was, and um, that song kind of caught like wildfire a little bit. Like I, I usually when I put out a song, you know, you do the normal promotion and and I'll do all the rounds and stuff like that. Like and sometimes it just feels like you're you're having to really push it. Uh, when I put Worst Way out, it was just kind of like I just did my normal stuff, but I, I didn't really have to do much for it to kind of travel on its own. Um, and it's almost at 200,000 streams on Spotify now, which is one of my biggest songs. And, and Spotify added it to their editorial playlist, um, to their editorial playlist, the Fresh Finds for independent artists. They have these Fresh Find playlists for independent artists. Um, so they added it to their main one, I think, back in July, and then they had uh, they had it on their R and B fresh finds for about two or three months. So a lot of people were able to find the song through that, um, and then through that song, they went through the rest of the you know the rest of the mixtape, and uh, I've gotten nothing but good good uh, feedback from that. So you know, it's it's been it's been nice to see the hard work over the past year is finally paying off. And now I'm kind of in the studio right now, putting, uh, putting together more music and another project for next year. So. Okay. Well, congratulations on uh, your success. Um, now this is, you said you like to, you're more hands-on uh, when it comes to just everything involved in the music. Um, do you work with other producers or writers or, you do everything in house. Yeah, so I, um, I I do work with other producers. So I co-produce um, is what we usually do. So I'll usually produce something 
um, get a demo done, maybe lay down some simple vocals, uh, and then I'll pass it off to like one of my friends who are like like a producer. Because basically, like I I'm the kind of artist where like I'm able to produce um, along with songwriting and vocals, but it's not my 100% passion is not the production side of things. So I'm able to do it. So kind of what I do is, is I'll start like a very simple demo with maybe like a few instruments, but you get the idea of the song um, and I'll kind of finish that. And then I'll pass it off to one of my friends who that's their passion is production, you know? And so they'll take it and make it, you know, this big thing and detail it and this, this and that. Um, and my real passion is like songwriting and, and singing. So um, normally I don't, I haven't, I mean, not out of lack of like wanting to collaborate with anyone, but I've, I haven't really done any co-writing sessions um, as far as the songwriting side, um, but I'm open to it. Uh, I just think I know like what I want to say you know, most of the time because I write from a lot of personal stuff. Um, and I've just kind of been in that position where co-writing wasn't the first thing that was introduced to me like, as I was coming up. So I'm able to do it on my own. Uh, and I feel more comfortable doing it on my own most of the time. But I think maybe once I get back to L.A. or even in Nashville, like, I'll definitely be up, open to co-writing more once COVID kind of gets to a place where it's okay for us to be around people. Um, and with the vocals, yeah, I just kind of lay down the vocals and, and yeah, pass it off to one of my friends who, who will produce it, but mostly co co-producing and writing uh myself okay uh let me ask you um if you had a um if you had a chance to work with anybody uh producing wise uh who would who would that person be um i'm a big fan of murder beats um he's a big hip-hop producer um also a big uh fan of london on the track he's another hip-hop producer um, also, uh, Pharrell, I grew up <laughs> loving Pharrell, still love Pharrell. Um, he's produced some of my favorite songs. Uh, also Timbaland. Timbaland is, is, uh, cause he produced a lot of what I grew up listening to with Aaliyah. Um, and, uh, I think, uh. Probably Boy Wanda too. He's he's a he's another hip hop producer. Um, I think produ production wise, like I would I would definitely those are my top five. Um, and I I think probably artist wise, maybe like uh, definitely two that come to mind are Drake and Kaylani. Love them, two of my favorite artists. And uh, but yeah, there's there's a whole list. It's it's hard to it's hard to name just a few, but uh, but yeah. So definitely okay are you um are you active on uh, social media are you doing the instagram live and facebook live and stuff like that yeah i do uh i do a lot of instagram live with uh my fans just to kind of keep in in touch i think right now i'm at a point where i've got like you know tw like 20 maybe 20 to 50 people that are like just dedicated fans. And I think I, I feel like some people skip over the step of like taking care of those, those core people. Um, and they just kind of want to get more and more fans into this and that. But I think for me, like, and uh, even on Instagram, like I like to take care of those people that, that, you know, really, really rock for me. Um, that, that are always messaging me and always commenting and always liking and da 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 da. Um, so I, I always respond to everybody. Um, I think the mentality is of like, let me seem like I don't care. I seem like I'm untouchable or, or something like that. But um, no, nah, that's not me at all. I interact with everybody on my Instagram. And when I do go live, I remember people and I say, hey, and sometimes I'll bring them on live and, and we'll talk. And, and it's kind of cool because some people are from different countries. So it's like, Normally, you would never be able to meet them unless you played a show where they are. But Instagram gives you the opportunity to to be able to do that, which is, which is right. really cool. Um, why don't you uh, 
Well, let me ask you a question. Um, before COVID um, took place, did you do a lot of uh, live performances? Did you tour at all or? Um, I played a few acoustic uh, shows in LA before COVID hit. Um, and I do a lot of that. I like to do a lot of stripped down performances with my guitarist and me. Uh, so I would do a lot of that here in Nashville and I would do that in LA. Um, as far as just kind of like heavy touring, I, I haven't yet. And I think I'm at a point where like, you know, I'm starting to build that now. I think maybe in about a year, once I kind of have another project and maybe I can like, like, open for somebody first or like go on tour with somebody else first and then kind of fill the waters out and then try to put my old shows together. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of in this weird middle space of like, I've done, I've built a lot, but there's still a lot to be built um, as far as, you know, the whole brand and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I definitely want to get into more shows after, after COVID. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you, uh, Tony B, um, uh, plug your social media uh, connects. Yeah, it's uh, Tony B online on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter, and then it's Tony B videos on YouTube. Um, but you could probably just put in Tony B online um, in Google, and everything will everything will pop up there. Okay, and where can they uh, purchase your music? Uh, everything is available on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. Um, can listen on youtube too you know if you don't pay for anything everything's on youtube as well the whole mixtape is on youtube too and all the videos and everything so okay spotify Apple music though for sure all right um uh, anything else you want to add uh tony b um not that i can think of just you knew you knew what this was is is out right now go check that out and the video is also out on YouTube, uh, we ended up shooting that in LA back in August, um, and it ended up coming out really, really nicely. Um, we made sure everybody was safe, mask, all that good stuff. But uh, really proud of that video. That's one of my first like full visual uh, music videos. So that came out really nice, and uh, you check that out on YouTube. And then I got new music coming out in about a month, uh, and yeah got new music coming out in about a month okay and that's separate from your uh, your latest your latest work yeah um with it's it's gonna be a new song um and so that'll be kind of whatever is next for next year okay um well we'll be definitely on the lookout for that are you doing any um well, I guess with COVID, it's probably hard. Um, no more videos for right now. Just, uh, just what you have out. Um, I, I definitely got a lot of stuff planned for next year that we're kind of in the works right now. Um, I will say, probably by March, like there'll definitely probably be like another video. Where right now we're kind of in putting stuff together. Like I have a good handful of songs that um, that are kind of materializing into this next kind of thing that I'll do um but we're still kind of trying to figure that out and stuff but um definitely planning some to to shoot some stuff in like January and February so okay let me ask you a quick question about songwriting um how long does it typically take you to uh to write a song oh man that that's a hard question just because it, it can it's so up and down um so sometimes I could sit down and a song will come to me and I'm not even playing. Like it'll come to me in like 10 minutes and I'll write the whole thing. Um, and then I'll go in probably the next day and record it. And then sometimes, you know, I'll write a verse and then I can't get through it. So then I'll sit on that for like a month and I'll have like the voice note in my phone and the lyrics. Then I'll be in the shower and be like, oh, I just thought of another thing for this, this song that I wrote a month ago. Put that down write the next verse two months later so sometimes it can take up to like six months but then sometimes it could be 10 minutes so it kind of just depends on a bunch of different things like how i'm feeling where i am like mind space wise uh who i'm around who i'm producing with if i am in the room with somebody uh, 
but yeah, on average, it's probably around about a day. Okay. For like a full song. Okay. And average. when do you, one more quick question here. When do you know that the song is done? When do you know that you got it? There's, that's it. It's done. Do you rely on other people, like other producers, to say, "Okay, this is this is good. We we can roll with this." Or, well, I and I'm probably the worst person to ask that because I'm always wanting to tweak stuff to the very end. And even when I put stuff out, I'm like, "Dang, I should have, you know, changed that a bit." But um, I think for me, what I do, kind of my whole process is like, I'll kind of spend my own time with it. I really don't like anybody else in the room unless you're producing on the song or you're writing on the song. So when I make a song, it's usually I like to spend my own time with it. I don't like having opinions in the room like while it's being made. So I'll kind of spend my own time with it first. And then once I have like a few, and I also don't like going one by one, like, hey, how do you like this song? And then how do you like, like and then write another song. And then, so I'll, I'll get about five songs together that I wrote over the span of maybe like a month. And then I'll send it out to like my friends um, and, other producers and stuff like that. And then I'll start getting opinions for like a handful of songs at a time. Um, and I kind of base it on like how they feel because all my friends in my circle and everybody that helps me and is around me is super honest with me, which is really important. They don't, they don't, you know, just tell me what I want to hear. So I'll get told if something's just not, you know, not it. And so once I kind of zone in on like what's the stronger songs in the batch, I'll focus in on those and then I'll kind of just like keep adding stuff over time. And then I'll kind of let people again listen to like the final versions. And if anybody's just like, ah, oh, I just feel like it's missing something, da, 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 uh, you know, then I'll look, I'll take another look at it and stuff like that. But I've gotten to a point where like, I think I've gotten pretty good at like deciding when and knowing when something is good good to go and when it still needs a little bit a little bit of work but okay but i'm super detailed about that <laughs> yeah all right so it sounds like 2021 is going to be hopefully um a big year for you let's hope so i mean i got a lot of stuff planned and and a lot of this new music is is i've pushed myself to do something you know completely different and um and even writing wise, I, I don't know, I, I like to push, I never like to compete with anybody else. I always just like to compete with what I did last. So I've been challenging myself with the writing, better melodies, like more melodies that show off my voice more, you know, pushing myself vocally, production wise. So everything that's planned for next year is like completely next level for me. So let's hope, let's hope it is a good year for sure. Here, here. Uh, 2020, uh, can't wait till this year end. Couldn't end fast enough. Uh, right. <laughs> Tony B, I appreciate you uh, joining the show today, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely want to again. Definitely a good conversation. Yeah, no problem. Anytime, man. And uh, let us know. Um, like I said, um, we're here to help uh, artists to uh, get more exposure. Mm -hmm. and so that was one of the reasons why I started the podcast. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time today, sir. Uh, sure. and good luck with everything, man, and keep us posted. I will. Thank you for having me. No problem. That's Tony B, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Tony B. You can find out more about Tony on his social media sites at Tony B Online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.